Great Pyramid and other ancient monuments were constructed, all unexplained by the primitive technology of their times. My research shows that the Great Pyramid was a geomechanical power plant that responded sympathetically with the Earth's vibrations, converting that energy into electricity. The Egyptians used the same principles of anti-gravity that Ed Lee Scarlin understood and created an unlimited source of clean energy. Could we be talking about an end to the current energy crisis? And an end to rapidly escalating gas prices at the pump? And electric rates at home? Can we stop building costly new power generating plants? There is a small group of scientists in the world that have all this knowledge and they're using it. We're told in recent days that there's an energy crisis. They're having problems with creating new energy sources. Well, um, that's not true. The whole of the gravity field is energy, and uh, it'll never run out. Now, all these new energy systems, uh, all you'll have in the house, whether it be an antenna on the roof, uh, a small box full of electrical circuits uh, hanging on the wall somewhere or in a cupboard, and you've got free power. That's all you need. This was done right back in 1931 by Tesla, Nikola Tesla. He, um, he took the motor out of a PSR car, uh, put one of his electric motors in it, ran a car with the same method. He had a, approximately about six foot of aerial sticking at the back of the car. He had a small box under the dashboard uh, full of electric circuits and a few valves. And he was getting 90 miles an hour out of the thing. Now I think we can boil this all down to um, saying that we could have a future with uh, a world with unlimited energy available and uh, with no pollution. And to think now, a man like Ed Leedsgallon, just a small guy like he was, five foot tall, and he knew the secrets of anti-gravity. Now, how did he do it? If he can do it, and uh, otherwise fairly uneducated, what would happen if they taught this in our universities? If the dream of a pollution-free world seems like nothing more than a wild fantasy, consider this. A group calling themselves the International Tesla Electric Company is today offering people free electricity to be generated on their own property by a new type of generator that uses the power of magnets. But how did Ed Leeds Scalman, a man with only a fourth grade education, come to understand the most complex secrets of the universe? On Saturday night, Ed would ride his bike into town dressed in his best clothes. He sat on his bike and watched the people studying the personalities of those who came by. And with equal care, he relentlessly observed natural phenomena. Millions of people all over the world have been fooled, including myself, by wrong drawings in astronomy books in showing how the Earth's yearly pass around the sun causes summer and winter. In fact, the drawings are wrong. I was lucky. I made a rock telescope and a rock sundial and they defooled me. Now I know the right path the Earth follows. The scientists should come to Rock Gate, Homestead, Florida, and have a good look at the new drawing, the telescope, and the sundial, and then notice how they would affect science. And he also observed nature with incredible detail. This is for biologists. I can see chromosomes without the microscope. To see, I close my eyes and then I open one eye just a little to look at the blue sky. Then I can see chains of beads floating in the liquid in my eye. Was it simply Ed Leeds Scalman's quiet observation of the world that facilitated his understanding and discoveries about the world? Did he learn his secrets from the study of ancient Egypt? Is all matter composed of magnetism as Leeds Scalman claimed? And can scientists today alter the polarity of magnets to nullify the pull of gravity? Could it be that ultimately the answer is in an invitation to explore and study things for ourselves? Ed's sign at the castle boldly warns visitors, you will be seeing unusual accomplishments. That is certainly the case. On November 7, 1951, Ed Leeds Scalman took a bus to Jackson Memorial Hospital, leaving a sign at the castle, We'll be right back. A month later, he died quietly in his sleep from cancer. Unfortunately, Ed died without revealing his secrets. The mystery of his spectacular coral castle remains unexplained. <laughs>